Welcome back to Godot 101, Intro to 3D. This is part three. In this part, we're going to make a user-controlled character that can move around and jump in the 3D world. All right, here's the scene that we made last time. I just removed the crates out of it. I have my ground plane and my directional light, and that is all right now. So we're going to use, start using some of those other blocks that were in the platform kit. So if you look in there, there are a bunch of them that start with the word block, and those are the different platform pieces. If you highlight all of them, which I'm going to do right here, and you click the Import tab, you'll see that when they're imported, they're going to be spatial nodes. Let's change this to Static Body and click Reimport. That way, whenever they're instanced, they're going to start out being a static body. So let's start with the block large one. If we double click on it, it's going to tell us we need to make a new inherited scene, just like we did with the crate in the last video. So hit that and then you'll see our platform block. And all you need to do, since it started as a static body, is add a collision sibling to it. And change its name to block large and save this. Now I recommend you save it in a separate folder because you're going to have a bunch of these. I made a folder called Platform Objects that I'm saving them in. And then when I go back over to my scene, I can instance one of these, my block large scene that I saved there, and there it is. Now we want to be able to place these so that they line up. So what you can do is set configure snap to 0 0.5. And then when you turn on snap, it's going to move at 0.5 unit increments. And that means if I duplicate this and make another one, right, I can line them up just right. So add a few blocks and lay out a level. Feel free to use a bunch of the other ones if you want and get creative. Uh, you can make it as complicated as you want. I'm going to do a fairly simple one, which I'll show you now. So there's a little level I made up. I just used some of the ramps so that when we test our character, we can climb up the ramps, jump off things, and so on. Now let's make our character. Start with a new scene, and let's add a kinematic body. Kinematic bodies work very much the same as the 2D version. If you've followed any 2D tutorials, and hopefully you have, they have a move and slide method just like the 2D kinematic body does. We just need to add a mesh instance and a collision shape. For the mesh instance, I'm going to create a sphere mesh. And for the size, I'm going to give it a radius of 0.5. Now notice that the radius only is in the XZ plane, and so the height also has to get set. If you want it to remain circular, set the height to 1. Right? And then we get a nice sphere shape that is going to have a diameter of 1 unit. And then we can just make a collision shape along with it, new sphere shape. You can drag, again, the little handle, or I will just go here and make the radius. 0.5, then I know it will be exactly the same. Let's add a material to the mesh so that we can give it a color. I'm going to choose like a blue here. Make it a little lighter. Okay, now a sphere, it's going to be very hard to tell which way it's going. So let's add another mesh to give a front to this. So I'm going to add another mesh instance. And this time I'm going to use a prism mesh. So this is a prism mesh shape. We're going to resize it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.1. Um, let me turn off snap here. And then we're going to, let me move it out so you can see it. There it is. So it's made a little triangle shape. And I'm going to rotate it 
I'm going to rotate this in the x direction by a negative 90 so that it points forward. And so forward is along the negative z-axis. And you can tell that because the local, or sorry, the global gizmo arrows point in the positive direction. So this blue arrow is pointing in positive z. This is the positive z direction. So I'm going to move it in the negative z direction so I'm going to stick out the front and maybe I'll raise it up a little bit. So that arrow will sort of point out the front of our character. Now before we start coding the movement, let's talk about the controls. In the project settings, in the input map, I have added the controls here. I've got a move forward event, move back, strafe right, strafe left, and jump. I'm using WASD and the spacebar for jump because we're going to use the mouse for looking around when we get to that. But first we're going to do the movement. So go ahead and add these input actions and then attach a script. Let's rename this to character and save it. And we'll attach a script to it. Okay, so let's start with some of our variables we're going to need. We're going to need a variable for gravity. It's going to be how fast we fall. This is a kinematic body, so we have to calculate gravity ourselves. We're going to use the vector3.down constant, which is an arrow pointing down, negative in the y direction. I'm going to multiply it by the strength I want, which is 12. So that's how strong gravity will be. Speed is going to be how fast the character moves. Jump speed is going to be how fast the character jumps up when we hit the jump key. And then we're going to have a velocity vector to track our character's velocity. So let's start with the physics process. So in here we need to add gravity to our velocity. And then we need to get our input, which we're going to write a function for this. And then we need to move using our velocity. Move and slide velocity. And we need to configure the up direction. Well, that's vector 3 dot up. So that's all we need to move. We just now need to define our get input. So here I'm going to set my velocity dot x and my velocity dot y, not y dot z, to 0. Because I don't want the character to be moving when I'm not pressing any of the arrow keys. And then we're going to check for the inputs. So first we'll do move forward. And when we do that, we want to move in the negative z direction. So velocity dot z minus equals speed. And we do the same for the other inputs. Okay, and that should do it. So now if we go over to our scene, and we are going to instance the character in here. Let's find our character, put them in a good starting location, there's our camera, our camera can see them, yeah we need to move the camera back a bit, there we go, maybe up a little bit, alright, so let's try this out. So I'm going to press the WASD keys. And the A and D are strafing, forward, and back. All right, so that's all working fine. But the problem we have here is that we can't rotate. Right? The character is always facing in the same direction, and we can't change direction. So that's the next part we need to implement. Okay, so let's move the camera. I'm going to move the camera up a little bit more and angle it down because I want to be able to look down and see which way the character is facing so we can test our rotation. There we go. So I want to be able to see the character rotating and see which way the 
arrows pointing. Now we're going to go into the character script and add the code for rotating. So we want to rotate whenever the mouse moves side to side. So we're going to use the unhandled input. We're using unhandled input instead of input because we want to make sure that what, in general, whatever GUI you use is going to intercept the input events first and then unhandled input is going to be the ones that pass on to the game. So if our event is input event mouse motion, that means we moved the mouse. And we want to rotate based on the mouse's motion in the x direction. That's contained in the relative property. And since we want to move, if we move to the right, we're going to rotate to the right, move to the left, we're going to rotate to the left. We can do this all in one. So we're going to rotate our character in the y direction. But something to keep in mind is we don't want to rotate the same speed with a small mouse movement as we do with a large mouse movement. So we want it to be relative to the movement that you input. So we're going to use lerp for that. And so we're going to lerp between 0 and some movement speed. Let's put that up here at the top. We'll call that spin. And that's going to be the base angle of our movement, of our rotation speed. And we're going to alert between 0 and that based on our event.relative.x, the amount that we moved the mouse. And that value is going to be in pixels, so they can be pretty large. So dividing by 10 is going to scale that back a little bit. So let's go ahead and test it out and see what happens. So now as I move the mouse side to side, the character is rotating. See, so if I move the mouse a little bit, it moves slow. But if I move the mouse fast, it moves fast. But now watch what's going on with the movement. Right? When I press W to go forward, I go that way. But when I rotate the character, I still go that way. So our coordinates, our movement, is happening in global space. But what we really want is we want the character to go whatever direction it's pointing. So we want to use the character's local coordinates. And that's what we're going to do next. So here I've got my character. Let's look at them from the top. Let's change the top view. So there's my character, and it's pointing forward right along the negative z-axis. And when I rotate this character, you see those arrows don't change, right? Because they're the global direction. And that's what's happening right now is we're moving along these global arrows, which doesn't matter which way I'm pointing. So what we want to do is use the character's local space. And so if we can illustrate that by switching, clicking this button and switching to local space mode. In local space mode, see how when I rotate, so do the gizmo arrows. So the, in the character's local space, forward is this way. Forward is the direction that that white triangle is pointing. And that's what we want. We want to move using local space. So how do we do that in code? To do that, we use something called a transform. So you've probably already noticed, as we've been setting properties, that every spatial object has a transform property. And the transform includes the translation, the rotation, and the scale. And those are encoded in this matrix. This transform matrix is how the is how the engine is keeping track of those properties. So if I rotate the character and you see the rotation degrees start, the transform isn't updating. You actually have to save it to update. But when I save it, you see how the ro the properties have changed. Right? And so these properties are encoding that rotation and and tell us that the forward direction is actually is actually this and not that. So when you want to access that in code, you access the transform.origin, which will tell you this data, where it's moved to, or the transform.basis. The basis has the rotation in it. It tells you the local direction arrows for the body. So let's go back into our character's script. And we're going to change what we're doing here in the git input. So I want to reset the velocity vector. But I don't know which way it's going to be going, right? And based on the character's local, 
based on the character's local coordinates, it might be going partially in Z, partially in X. We don't know. So I'm going to reset the whole velocity to zero. But if I do that, that's going to cancel out gravity, and we wouldn't be, we'd stop falling. So I want to capture the Y velocity so that at the, at the end, I can put that back. just so that we don't lose that information and we'll keep accelerating downwards and so on. But now we need to change what we do when we move forward or back. So now instead of just adding to the Z when we press forward, we're gonna take our velocity and we're gonna add the transform.basis.z. Transform.basis.z is gonna be the that blue arrow in the the blue arrow in the local coordinates. So that always when it rotates, transform.basis.z is going to be this blue arrow. Well, we want to move opposite that blue arrow when we go forward, so that's why I'm putting a negative in front of it. The basis is a unit vector, so we need to multiply by our speed. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other inputs. So strafe is going to do the x transform, forward and back are going to be the z transform. So let's try that out and see what it looks like when we run. So now let's turn and point an angle. Now I go forward whatever direction I am facing, and strafe goes side to side. And that's good, but it's also very hard to control. It would be much better if we had a camera attached to the player that sort of followed us around. So we're looking over the character's shoulder. So here's our character. Let's add a camera to it. And let's take that camera and put it behind and above the character. I want to get a little bit higher up. Angle it down so we're looking over the shoulder. Maybe a little farther away. Set the camera to current. And now we should be following over our character's shoulder with our camera. Now we can walk around on the map and more easily see where we are. And we're almost done, we just need to add the jumping now. So in our script, we're going to add a flag called jump that's going to toggle when we press the jump button. So down here in our input, we're going to set jump to false unless we press the input. And I'm going to use I'm going to use just pressed jump we want it to only trigger once per button press. If we, if we did, then we'll set jump equal to true. And then in our physics process is where we can check to see if we're allowed to jump. Because after move and slide is when it knows whether it's on the ground or not. So if jump is true and is on floor is true, then we want to take our velocity.y and set it equal to our jump speed. And now we'll run it and see how our jumping works. So now we have a jump. All right, so that is a really good start on a controllable 3D character. Hopefully this was helpful to you. The One of the biggest takeaways from this lesson is the concept of transforms. Get used to using those transforms because this transform.basis is going to be massively useful in all sorts of circumstances, as you'll see as we get further into the tutorial series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.